So about a month ago, Origin PC did a live stream of building a very special machine. One for me. So, it's finally here in a massive wooden crate. And naturally, the first thing I'll be doing is tearing it apart. Welcome to another unbuild log here on Linus Tech Tips. If I could only get this on the table. Okay, so I don't know who came up with Origin's premium shipping containers, but this thing is amazing. It actually feels like the stuff inside is worth $4,000, which in this case is probably because it is. It's quite a high-end config. So you start by removing all the screws from the top of the wooden crate. You can do this by hand, but I would strongly recommend that you whip out an electric drill if you're not looking to uh, beef up those forearms. Then the side comes off, you slide the cardboard box out of the wooden crate, remove these plastic lock things and lift the whole top of the box up to reveal the accessory carton with some good stuff like extra power supply cables, uh, magnetic Wi-Fi antennas and ooh, an RGB lighting controller and some less useful stuff like CDs and a DVI to VGA adapter as well as the most glorious soft cell foam I have ever laid my hands on. I mean, I know I'm going on and on about the packaging at this point, but it just keeps getting better. The case is shrouded in this cloth scratch cover, and when you lift that off, bam, more badass foam. This uh, bagged stuff works by mixing a couple of expanding chemicals when you break the internal separator, kind of like a glow stick. Then what it does is it expands to fill in all the nooks and crannies, making it much safer to ship systems with graphics cards pre-installed. I remember looking into these back when I worked for a system integrator. We got a couple of samples and then decided against it due to the uh, ching ching that they were going to cost us. Now I've seen Origin's Millennium case at shows, but I've never really been hands on with it. It is surprisingly well thought out. Mine is a mid-tower configuration without the modular bottom piece for more drives or cooling and with a beautiful red accent paint job that goes perfectly with the component choices inside. I let them pick the hardware since they're the ones ponying up for the system here. So I removed this back cover. This is here because the motherboard can go in four different ways or something like that. So the IO might not always end up going to the rear and fired up the system. There's that RGB lighting. It's got the same basic controls as you'd expect. So whatever color you want on the inside, uh, sort of front top side accent pieces and the front logo, but with a twist. There's a button on the case that you can push to control a completely separate UV LED strip. I don't have any UV reactive parts in this machine, but it's a nice touch for those who do. With the system fired up, I checked out the pre-installed programs. Actually, nothing too bad in here. And then I ran some stress tests to ensure that system temperatures and performance were as expected. One cool note is that while I took my readings from IDA64 in software, the CPU temp can also be read from a little display directly on the motherboard. Cool. The video cards brought about the first challenge in my unbuild, even I fix it couldn't save me from these skinny holes to reach the GPU screws. So I needed my old jeweler screwdrivers and a pair of pliers to extract them and actually no, not quite. I also needed some side cutters since the PCI Express power connectors were cleverly cable managed to the fan power for the video card so they would not move at all. Speaking of the video card though, these are MSI Gaming Series GTX 980 Ti's. Normally, I prefer rear exhaust cards, but this case has ample airflow between the rear, top, and bottom fans for the extra heat that gets blown around inside the case, and these types of coolers do do a better job of keeping the card itself cool, and you can see that in the results from cooling, even though it was 32 degrees outside on the day that I was doing this testing. The CPU cooler is a custom jobby from Asa Tech. You can tell from the design of the hold down with Origin's branding on the block and the long quarter inch tubes go over to the front where they're connected to the radiator. 
Before we look at that though, we'll pull out the CPU. The Core i7-6700K is pretty much the perfect choice for a system of this class. As long as you don't intend to add more graphics cards or a ton more PCI Express expansion cards. Keeping it cool is a massive triple 120mm radiator, something I had wished for from the major AIO makers for ages, with three Origin branded fans running through a clever little cable management grommet to a fan splitter on a custom PCB near the front of the chassis hiding behind the five and a quarter inch bays. It should be noted that this is one of the few things on this case that is not symmetrical. For power, it doesn't get much more overkill than a 1300 watt EVGA G2. And while the supernova blows up everything and takes everything else with it, branding of EVGA's power supplies doesn't make a ton of sense to me. I can't argue with the quality or in this case, the cable management. I don't know why more case makers, like people who just make cases, not Origin, who has their case designed and put systems in it. I don't know why more case makers don't build their products like this. There are so many cable management points. They cost nothing extra to manufacture and make life so much easier for the builder who wants to do a professional job of cable management behind the motherboard tray. Origin's motherboard choice is a little more overkill than I would normally opt for for a personal system, but I can't fault the features of the Z170A Gaming M9 ACK. It's got the onboard sound isolated from the rest of the PCB, dual M.2 slots for up to two M.2 SSDs. It's got a ton of IO, including USB type C, dual front USB three headers for the four front ports on this case. It's got ample cooling and a flashy, thank goodness I don't have to install anything but the bare driver killer networking solution. For RAM, it appears at first that they've gone with plain Jane dual channel HyperX Fury DDR4, but wait, <gasps> what's that? I want HyperX RAM with my name on it. That is freaking awesome. Which I guess leads us to mass storage. I really liked the hot swap system for this case. One of the weird things is that only three of the bays are plugged in out of the factory, so you might have to guess and check a little to find out which ones have SATA connections. There's no reason that they shouldn't have been able to run a couple more cables and do them all. But overall, the one terabyte Seagate drive that ships in the system should be well protected and well cooled by this aluminum five bay hot swap cage with expansion being a piece of cake. Our optical drive is well, you guessed it, it's an optical drive. Woohoo! It's one of those things that used to have sex appeal, actually, and now is about as interesting to enthusiasts as a USB-powered jack-o'-lantern. Probably less. There are a few things that I want to take a closer look at here on the case. It took me a while, but I finally figured out the front logo illumination and how that happens without any power leads going to it. There's an LED that comes out of that custom PCB that they have in the, in the front top of the case that handles the IR receiver for the RGB lighting, as well as all the front IO and front buttons and all of that good stuff. I also figured out how they mount the motherboard in the different configurations. So you just take these rails unscrew them, and there are just a ton of holes in this baby. So depending on what orientation you want to mount it in, let's say we wanted a reverse ATX, you just move them around to where they go, and you slide the motherboard tray in the other way, you put some screws back in, and there you have it. While I was doing that though, I discovered that one of the RGB lighting strips was in the way of trying to orient the motherboard the other way. And it turns out, this is really cool. Origin actually did up their own RGB lighting strips. They've actually like got their name right on the back of the PCBs. So these use a hard PCB rather than a flexible one. And then they are hard mounted with standoffs and screws to the case rather than relying on adhesive. Because as you guys probably know, if you've ever used LED strips, that adhesive can come off pretty easily, especially over time. That's an over-engineered solution to the problem of LED strips falling off and shipping, but I really, really like it. So there you have it, guys. My unbuild treatment of Origin PC's masterpiece is 
complete. I have reduced it to its bare components. And if you guys were thinking, well, gee, Linus, that is a crying shame because I'd love to have an Origin PC. We've actually got a link in the video description, including an offer code. It's Linus OPC. You can get yourself free CPU and GPU overclocking from those guys. But if you like the video and you're not looking to buy a computer necessarily, all you got to do is click the like button, get subscribed for more videos just like this one. And uh, hey, maybe if you really liked it, you can support us by buying a cool shirt like this one. Well, actually not quite like this one. This one's all foily and shiny. It's a new design that's uh, hopefully going to be coming soon by uh, joining our community forum where you can ask questions and answer questions and maybe even become a contributor over there. You get a cool little contributor badge or just by checking out our other channels. We've got some great videos up on channel super fun lately. You can click the little eye in the corner if you want to check out the one that we've got featured right here. And I think that's it. That's all. I will see you guys again next time.